can you beat Spyro 1 while only collecting red gems? The short answer to that question is no, but the long answer to that question is that I have a very interesting TAS tool assisted speed run to my left here that you can see is going to collect every red gem in the game and only every red gem in the game, or at least that's the goal. Let's see what a machine, a perfectly handcrafted frame perfect speed run of red gem percent really would look like in Spyro 1. This is actually, to those of you who don't know, is actually a miscellaneous category on the Spyro 1 leaderboard extensions. So there are speed runs that are go beyond just any percent and 120% and Vortex, and this is one of them. Uh, this task was made by Toasted Cat and just came out today. It's the latest in a long line of interesting, kind of sillier themed, I guess a meme tasks as you could call them, but make no mistake, people like Toasted Cat and Waffle Wizard put a lot of energy into these tasks and they showcase movement in this game that is something that I don't think you'll ever see from a human player at least. It's levels of precision and proxies and flops and supercharges, especially supercharged sharp turning. You're just never gonna see this, no matter how good I, I get at this game. And believe me, I've tried. <laughs> He's hitting the guy perfectly like with the frame. <laughs> Hits him perfectly like the one frame you like. Oh, how do you can make that jump? You can't make that, that's illegal. That's fucking, I did not, I did not know you could make that jump. Also, I'm gonna, it's on HD. I thought it would turn it up a little more. I did not know you could make that jump. That jump is illegal, dude. You can't just make that jump. That's a sick jump. Hey man, cheers in the chat. This is gonna be a good one. Where are my chuggers at? YouTube chuggers, this one's for you. It's already out of bounds. So we saw in Waffle Wizard's last uh, silly percent task, which if you haven't seen it, check it out on my YouTube channel. Uh, it's just a couple videos ago. Um, that uh, there was a lot of out of bounds sort of proxying when you come back in bounds. And um, let's see let's see if he does any of that here. Oh, he's going for, again, I gotta remember, he's just going for all the red gems. <laughs> I, I don't even, I, I was thinking in my mind, it's like, oh, who cares? Or, no, this is gonna be a more collection focused task. And so in my mind, I was thinking, okay, he's gonna be proxying out of bounds and inbounds, but no, that, this is more like, how can we officially get to every red gem as quickly as possible while avoiding every other gem? <laughs> and you can see in spots like that, it is really hard to avoid the other gems. So that's why this is definitely kind of like a, a almost task only type thing. But we'll see, I'm one question I have about this that I, I haven't seen this task yet, so I have no idea. I don't even follow runs of this, so. Um, one thing that I'm kind of curious about is, is he gonna do um, cheats to get through the home worlds? Well, uh, we'll see. The only home world that has a gem requirement is gonna be, um, is gonna be Peacekeepers, but um, he hasn't collected any dragons so far, which leads me to believe that he is going to uh, cheat. Oh, so sick. To cheat to get through the Artisan's home world which of course has a 10 dragon requirement in order to exit. That uh, little flop you saw off the ram right there is actually, was almost actually integrated into real 120% runs. Um, I did practice it. I'd put a few hours into practicing that. It is RTA viable, we would call that. But um, it's obviously precise, kind of inconsistent. And it turns out that the 120% route that evolves from that is not even faster, or it's like exactly the same. Which, can I just make a side note here? That, by the way, beautiful wall glide. I've never seen someone wall glide from the bottom area up to the top. There's a really, like, it's so much different than the silly percent task that we saw from Waffle, where it's like, he's literally going through these levels in such, a, it's like, the, the amount of routing You'd think it's like you're going for a crazy task. Like the routes just go so like beyond what I know in my head to be like, okay, well you can go here, you can't go there. It's like it really just gets blown off of its fucking out of out of the out of the water. The whole concept of routing. That, I think that's the thing that excites me the most with tasks like this is that it's just seemed like what you can wall glide that like it gives me stuff to oh my god, <laughs> collecting the gems like without grabbing the greens. Side note, I know I'm cutting myself off a lot here, but side note about that, when he's collecting those gems at the end of the level, Sparks does see, if you don't actually touch a gem physically, which is what he did on those last two, Spyro's body, when the gem hits Spyro's body, that's when it collects. So when you get close to a gem and Sparks sees it, there's a, a there's a good like quarter to half a second of Sparks going like and like grabbing the gem and having it home in. That gem will not count, even if Sparks sees it, it will not count. Um, as being added to your inventory until it literally touches Spyro's body and despawns. 
So really, I mean, it's it's very careful movement to get around these gems, and especially like he's, I think part of the routing here is that Toasted Cat is making sure to end levels in spots where he would otherwise not be able to get around gems. You can end levels, you can see that the last two levels he ended were in those big groups of gems, because, um, because those greens can home in, but he can exit the level before they actually touch him. But of course it's a task, so he does it so quickly that I don't even think Spark sees them by the time he exits the level. I mean, just look how precise that movement was to get past the green, but to still get the reds. <laughs> See, I didn't even know about this glide. I didn't even know that there was like a jutting little part of the mountain there. So satisfying. Smart to do like an anti-flame charge to like take the optimal route there. He flames the boxes, but he doesn't get too close before flaming and charging. Otherwise, the gems would home in. Really neat routing, actually. Nah. <laughs> Where are my Nats at in the chat? Nah. <laughs> Saw that uh, same kind of optimization of the Artisan's wall glide in uh, Waffle Wizard stats. In normal runs, we would do a full hop and really try to stay high on that wall glide in order to get into this level. But obviously, you know frame by frame adjusted uh, tool assisted super play. You don't have to worry about that. Oh, this little route where he goes around the right side of the um, of the pole, that was also theorized by people and possibly to do in the RTA runs. That's one of those that's hard to make faster as a human, but it, in theory, it is faster. There's a lot of stuff like that in this game where like theoretically, you know, this route or that strat is like a second faster, but in practice, it's really hard to make some of these. Uh, as you can imagine, it's hard to make some of these more precise movement things. Um, not only consistent, but consistently faster. Oh yeah, oh you can see the, the lemonade on my mustache. <laughs> all right, where are we going? Now you guys remember my opinion from last video, all right? If it's cheating, it's invalid. What are we gonna see here? I don't think he collected 10 dragons. Oh, man, look at the cheating. Look at this fucking cheating bitch. <laughs> if you hate cheaters, if you think speedruns don't count if they're cheated, let me know in the comments down below. Cheater! Boo! Okay, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Guys, obviously he has to do the all levels cheat, otherwise he'd have to literally collect more than every red gem in the game. So that should already answer the question in this video, which is can you beat this game while only collecting red gems? No, obviously you can't. There's not enough red gem values in the game to uh, equate the five, six, what is it? 6,000 gems required to exit Dreamweaver. So you can't beat this game without collecting some other color gems, but you can do the all uh, worlds cheat and uh, that still allows you to just go to every home world and see like what would the theoretical route look like. And that's kind of a lot of like what these tasks are doing. It's like in order to open up the game for themselves, love how he just runs over that by the way. That's not easy to do. Um, oh, oh, the magic stairs. Oh, oh my God. When he just is continuously charge jumping up the stairs. Magic. It's beautiful. I didn't even know you could, oh my God. I didn't even know you could jump off that part. And then beautiful wall glide. I saw some people theorizing that in the discord recently. Nice reds there. Man, barely collecting that last red there. I mean, one thing that uh, that I want to just reiterate with the task is just how quickly he's moving through these. And I know that sounds like obvious, but in order to consistently grab gems in this game, you got to take the time as a real real time player. You got to take the time to slow down and like walk through big groups of gems in order for Sparks to see them all. Sparks sees gems in this game one at a time. He doesn't see them all at once, even though it may seem like that. He see it's like a one gem per frame thing. So. Even if Sparks, generally, when you charge through a group of gems, if there's three or more gems in a closer vicinity, you have to slow down to a walk so that Sparks can see see and collect all the gems within those couple of frames that he has. So again, for for Spyro to be just pushing through all of these gems, it's it's a riskier movement than you would think. It's like if he if he'd have been like like that right there, how far he stretches Sparks uh, Sparks's grab range behind Spyro. Interestingly, Sparks' grab range isn't actually like a perfect circle around Spyro. It's more of like a, it's like shorter behind Spyro and like longer kind of to the diagonal front and left. Not literally, literally it is a circle, but the way functionally it acts is like a sort of ellipses uh, around the front of Spyro. 
A beautiful. Oh, I love that proxy. I was wondering if uh, Waffle was going to do that proxy in a silly person. I'm so glad to see it uh, shown off in this uh, task. I've, I've seen that. I've had that happen to me in actual runs before. Believe it or not. I've seen it. No, wait, no, actually, that hasn't happened to me in runs, but I've seen it on the Discord when people go for, like, a really slow route, then they actually get fucked by that. It's, it's really funny to see people be like, whoa! Because, <laughs> I mean, dude, that rocket has collision while it's flying away, and it flies away at a million miles per hour, so if you perfectly flop in front of it, you're going to get shot, you know, in some direction. Um, Sparrow likes his burgers with only ketchup. God, you gotta add bacon and cheese. I'm with you, Sea Grazer. Yeah, you gotta add bacon and cheese to a burger. Come on now. Spyro's a man of taste. Now, this is the vortex strat you see here. It's a frame perfect jump while getting damaged. It's really, I, I can't even explain how that damage abuse gets you so much height. It doesn't really seem like it should, but just the mixture of the jump plus the damage, it's sort of like, I think a similar thing to what I was talking about in my glitch video about a new glitch where you stack um, knockback effects, stack momentum on itself. It creates some, um, in my opinion, what seems to be very bugged uh, momentum values to stack, uh, you know, two enemy knockbacks or to stack the uh, the high initial momentum from jumping. That's why it's a frame perfect trick because it has to be on the first frame of the jump. If you do it on any frame later, he doesn't even go nearly close enough. Wow, you see how precise it was to grab that red? Did you see that? How did he grab that red and not any of the other gems? That's like staggering. Did you see? Okay, sick, sick mechanic right there. I, I'm gonna go back a little bit. I, I promise I won't do this a lot, but I wanna just watch this whole home world one more time. Just this little section here. First of all, this, the fact that he was able to grab that red was insane. And then secondly, secondly, Pay attention to Sparks eating the fodder here. When he finishes eating, he starts flying back towards Spyro. So even though he misses that one red, as he's flying back towards Spyro, he's like calculating the distance from the gem when he, when he finishes eating. So even though he's flying back, it's a delay to grab. It's the only way you can delay a Sparks grab is by, is by sort of running past a gem right as Sparks finishes eating. And it's very, you know, it's very tricky to do, but it, do, it can happen in normal runs. You can sort of account for that in your recovery if you're like having trouble, you know, you're like doing awkward Sparkses and trying to get gems and stuff. It is the only way you can sort of extend the Sparks' range functionally. Even though that's not really what happens. He's just calculating like where where you were when you finished eating and then flying back and grabbing it late, basically. It's such a cool mechanic, by the way. Definitely, uh, it's one that's not, uh, a lot of players don't even know that that's a thing, that you can grab gems from afar like that. Such a cool jump. That jump isn't even super hard, but I've stopped going for it in runs because I'm a, I'm a big pussy. Cheers. Wow, do you see how quick that charge glide was? Very satisfying wall glide. You gotta love how like the movement just is barely enough to make it, you know, across the ledge or whatever. <laughs> That's a jump I didn't know you could do. That's a jump I didn't know you could do. That if you'd have asked me, if you'd have been like, Deo, can you jump from there to there? I'd have been like, no, that's impossible. Never seen it once in my life. <laughs> and there it is. There's been a few of those this run so far. Notice how he charged through that enemy, but the gem didn't home in. If you charge over, like on top of an enemy's hitbox, you don't actually collect the gem because the way gem collection works, it's not just because you charge an enemy that the gem homes in. It's because you're standing inside of the place where the gem spawns when you charge through an enemy. That's why the gem homes in. So if you're charging way on top of an enemy, you're gonna be too high for Sparks to detect the gem underneath. Sparks is, in this game is really bad at seeing gems underneath him. What's up, DZ? Welcome, welcome. You don't even think it's fast? What's fast? Is this done by pausing frame by frame? Not by literally in-game pausing. Uh, there is a lot of in-game pausing that happens, but um, you could think of it like he's, he, generally the way these tasks work is they'll record segments uh, on a controller and then they'll go back 
and all of the inputs will be recorded on their program. The program's called BizHawk. And then they'll go back and adjust those inputs and change them so that it, they kind of frame by frame craft the run that they want. Um, now, in the case of Waffle Wizard, I don't know what Toasted Cat did for this run. That's how John Unfill did his 120% theory task. Waffle Wizard said that he actually literally inputted every frame, every input frame by frame for his task, which imagine that, that's a lot of work. 30 frames per second. And th these are like, you know, 30, 40 minute runs, you know? And so obviously there, there is some pausing, you know, to in order to like go back and change certain segments, but... Um, It's more like pausing the game engine in in uh, BizHawk rather than uh, pausing the game like in game, if that makes sense. At least that's how I understand it. I'm I might be a little off with that explanation there. By the way, just disclaimer: I am I don't I don't make tasses, so this is just how I understand it to to be done. As you can imagine, there's many different ways to do it. And so I don't know what Toasted Cat's particular methodology is. Yeah, so he's going for all red gems. Now, I did see, I did kind of spoil myself, and I did go into the description of this video. Toasted Cat does say that there is one gem that is not red that he collects, so keep your eye out to see the one non-red gem in this run. I haven't seen it yet, but keep your eyes peeled. There is one non-red gem that he says he collects just to make, just to make the route cooler, which, you know what, I respect it. For a run like this, I respect it. Was it a purple? Did he toasted? Did you already get the gem at this point? If you haven't got it yet, don't spoil where it is. It's later, yeah. So keep your eyes peeled. Yeah, this, it's gonna be a where's Waldo. By the way, toasted cat in the chat up there. Make sure you guys follow. I'll have all his links down below, pin comment, all that. Legend. If you guys don't know, Toasted Cat's a very, very high level uh, Spiral 1 player as well as uh, Reignited. And now a TAS uh, connoisseur as well. So, want to see some good Spiral runs? Check out Toasted Cat. Or don't. That's cool too. So far in this level, I will say the movement feels like reasonably RTA viable. And when I say RTA viable, that means just like a real human could replicate it in like a sitting, you know, not like frame by frame. Hey, since we have Toasted Cat here, we were actually talking about this. D did you make this task frame by frame or did you record segments on a controller and then alter them later in BizHawk? How did you do it? Look at this. So here's the first example of supercharged sharp turning. You can see he's taking turns that are sharper than normal. And that requires literally perfect um, dual inputs, one direction, uh, one cardinal direction, left or right on the D-pad, and another one is going to be on the analog stick, slightly in the opposite direction and down, in, in a specific coordinate, of which there are up to 60, something like 60,000 possible X, Y coordinates for an uh, analog stick. So it's definitely the most precise thing uh, that you'll see in a Spirotas is supercharged sharp turning. And then to actually control the sharp turn and go certain directions with it, that's where there's a lot of work put into these tasks and it's nothing to sleep on. There's a reason you don't see that in normal runs. <laughs> you can see he did a little, <laughs> a little zigzag. Look at that, isn't that satisfying? Off camera, a little uh, wall bump, I'm guessing. Very satisfying. So yeah, so similar, you can see up there, you can see similarly to Waffle Wizard's silly percent task, uh, Toasted Cat opted to just literally just input every input frame by frame, which is very impressive. Again, the program that people use uh, to make tasks, to those of you who are interested, it's called BizHawk, B-I-Z-H-A-W-K. -B almost forgot a letter there, BizHawk. <laughs> Beautiful movement, just satisfying movement. I kind of like that, just charge down instead of jumping. I might do that in my runs. <laughs> kind of cool to think that even for like a real life player like myself, you can watch a task like this and glean just like little, I, the way I say it is like whether you're watching someone that has world record or a run that's as good or bad as yours or whatever, or, or like impossibly amazing like this. You're still gonna find in a game like this a lot of micro strategies. 
it's so it's insane that he's able to collect all these reds like while moving so quickly again the way sparks is calculating um gem collection is like you gotta you gotta give sparks enough time to see the gem you can't just charge pa the fact that he's supercharged and got all of the reds there is that's very precise you know again it, it speaks to the frame by frame inputs there that were required to do that in a normal run, you'd take very, you would intentionally like take time in the air to like give yourself more time on the ground. You know, you like zigzag, you'll see this in my runs a lot. Like and when I supercharge and I'm trying to collect a lot of gems coming down from a jump is I'll zigzag in the air so that I land in front of the gems to maximize the amount of time I'm on the ground. Wow. Oh, and then the fucking momentum carried. When, he, when you go back in bounds, we talked about this a lot on the silly percent task. When you go back in bounds um, from out of bounds in this game, the wall sort of gives you a proxy in a way. Now, in this case, a, he didn't fully get proxy, but he did get pushed in by the collision of the inner wall. And so he was able to carry that with his jump after collecting that red gem when he came back in bounds. Really satisfying momentum conservation there. There are no red gems in Nasty's loot. Nightbot is lying to you. I believe it's only purples and yellows. I don't even think there's blues or greens. Yeah, you got lied to by a robot. Yeah, Tara, we talked about that in Town Square, and I, I missed a couple of them, but yeah, the really great point, the anti-flame charge in order to maximize the uh, the lines that he's taking. He could easily just go around certain chests, but why bother when you can just run underneath the gems as they pop out of the, uh, of the chests? Pretty smart. Pretty smart and extra interesting because, you know, in normal speedruns, we try to do the opposite thing, where we flame and then charge and really quickly and close to the box in order to grab the gem out of its spawn point. Like I was talking earlier, you can make oh, so we saw that same exact damage abuse, uh, damage boost, <laughs> and the fireworks. Dude, Toasted Cat knows the firework proxies are like my heart. I love that. Oh, oh, and then okay, there's certain places on these electric pads, even when they're electrified, electrified, that you can stand on without taking damage. They're sort of badly uh, coated <laughs> like that. So certain polygons you can stand on even when they're electrified. Bet you didn't know that. That was cool. I didn't know that those particular polygons uh, were non-electric. Yes, once again, the goal of this task is, task is to only collect red gems. But there is going to be one gem that's not red collected at some point in this run. So keep your eyes peeled and let me know if you see it. We obviously did not get it there, as you can tell by all the gems coming in at the end. Nope, you didn't. No, there was no blue gem homing in at the end. Keep your eyes peeled. I don't know where it is either, so I mean, you, you guys' guess is as good as mine, but it has not come up yet, as far as I know. <laughs> Cute little roll right there. In Beastmaker's Homeworld, uh, just like little more interesting tidbits, if you touch the portals actually further down, the camera, the the level doesn't load until the camera touches the portal. This is true for any for any level. Um, it's not when Spyro touches the portal, it's when the camera behind Spyro touches the portal. And in Beastmakers in particular, you can really abuse that by touching portals on their far side in order to get the camera closer before, uh, before entering. You'll see that in my 120 runs. Again, very precise uh, charging and flaming here. If he'd have been a little bit closer to that frog when he flamed and then charged, it, the gem would have homed in. He was very close to the spawn point on that one. That was like near frame perfect anti-flame charging. Kind of a cool concept. Oh, there was another Sparks delay grab. Oh my God. I <laughs> See, now this is the shit that I love. This is my favorite thing about this particular task is all of like the, um, the you know, not necessarily hard, crazy jumps, but just jumps that you would have never thought of. I love that. Oh, and landing partially on the uh, on the trunk, on like the side of the trunk, you can do that on some of those platforms. 
Nice, beautiful damage abuse. And love that, the gainer. I call those gainers, where you do a magic stare onto... I do that in Misty Bog downstairs on my 120 runs. You magic stare onto the first turn if you press... Onto the first stare, and then if you press X quickly enough, again, you, mo you preserve the momentum. Similarly to, like, what I was talking about in Blowhard, where you preserve the momentum coming back in bounds. If you jump quickly enough out of these, like, little momentum boosts, you carry that momentum into your jumps. You jump higher than normal. It's pretty interesting. If you're, you know, if you're a nerd like me. Hey, where are the chuggers at? <laughs> okay, this is another near frame perfect trick. Look how he barely makes that. I dare anyone to try that. This That is technically the optimal vortex route is to do that. It, that is one of, I think, the last things to actually be implemented into a vortex run. And people have done that on controller before, not TAS in Vortex runs, believe it or not. Goes to show how crazy of a category Vortex is. But I mean, you could just see how crazy that jump was and yeah. Oh, there's like even a setup for it. See, there you go, as you can tell by DZ. I'm not that clued into it. That's pretty cool. Set up on respawn. So yeah, so if you wanted to do this setup, you'd have to take a death at the start of the level. It's kind of funny. Oh, and so that's what I was talking about earlier. The gem does not count until it touches Spyro's body. So even though Sparks saw the green first and like when like you saw the gem kind of coming towards the body. And the cool thing about that is you can when gems are floating in towards Spyro's body, like those couple of frames, um, then every gem that you run into is going to be a manual collection. So that was really a really clever movement there. Sparks' gem picking up range, which is what you're asking, like the range around Spyro, it is a per it's like an octagon. Um, there was a really good uh, viewer for it that uh, Piper showed me. Um, I wonder what video that's, it's, it's in one of my videos about, uh, about, uh, about mechanics. But anyways, um, it's basically, essentially, it's like a circle around Spyro, but functionally speaking, it, that circle takes on different shapes because of the way the camera is, is placed and the way perspective is in the 3D environment. Even though it is a perfect circle around Spyro, it's gonna feel like a uh, gem's reach. Wow, that was nice. That was a cool uh, out of bounds. That's very similar to the out of bounds we do in any percent 120. Cool, oh my God, I love, so okay. Quick aside here before I go on that tangent. The enemies are currently unrendered right now because he has not done the first metalhead cycle. So he's gonna go back around here and there's gonna be more invisible enemies. They're unrendered, but their hitboxes are still uh, there. So he just ran around a bunch of invisible enemies right there. He had to, that was actually very careful movement to not bonk on what would seem like nothing. Those are all the enemies that metalhead throws at you. So he just ran past a bunch of invisible enemies, which apparently did not have red gems. Oh, did he get the blue? Hold on, I want to go back and see it. Where is it? I want to see it. I'm going. I'm literally gonna watch this whole fucking level again. Oh, it's probably for this guy, right? It's this guy. No. Okay, red, red. I'm gonna look very closely here. Didn't get a blue. Am I already too far forward? There it was. Where? Oh, that! Oh, that makes sense! Okay, yeah, see, I didn't even notice that. Yep, that blue right there. That's- the reason that blue happens, you might be thinking like, well, what? He didn't hit anything. Why did that blue happen? Here, I'll go ahead and skip forward again. The reason that, uh, blue homed in was because, um, the enemies that Metalhead throws, if you just ignore them, their gems automatically home in. So in order for Toasted Cat to be able to do this route, um, to be able to go through the Metalhead fight and grab these reds without doing a, uh, without doing like a Vortex route, um, he had to, uh, he had to do that, which I think is cool. I appreciate that because, um, you know, it's just a different, you know, most optimal routes through Metalhead that don't take collection in mind, um, they'll go an entirely different way. They'll do like a wall glide or like a bounce that goes around the right side of the level out of bounds. That particular playthrough went around the left side of level out of bounds, which I've never seen before. So I, I, res I can see why Toasted opted for the blue there. It allowed for a much more creative route, much more unusual route that we <laughs> you may never see again, even in a Spyro Tass. So that, I get, I, I get it now. And thanks for pointing it out, everyone. I totally missed it. So thank you. Chuggers for the one blue gem in this task. Ignoring the blue, it would have 700 gems. Yeah, 
And Toasted Cat could have probably taken like another more awkward route to avoid the blue, but I'm glad he went the way he did for the reasons I stated. I don't remember what I was talking about earlier, but if anyone wants to uh, remind me, feel free. I was on some rant before we saw that blue. Oh, okay, so he would have had to do the, the entire fight, basically. I wonder how you would have been able to manipulate the enemies um, to not make the gems home. I'm sure there's some way. We got her. We got the fairy waifu level. Hey, if you love these fairies, if these fairies got you feeling some type of way, type a letter U in the comments if you made it this far into the video. U for oo woo, because those fairies are cute as fuck. <laughs> Cheers. Really nice. Oh my god. Can I just take a moment just to appreciate that jump charging right there? Look at that. That is what, that shit, I've never seen such beautiful jump charge. Usually, you know, you watch a task and they really try to do magic stairs everywhere. But the reality is, is that jump charging like that is usually going to net better lines in certain areas. Like, that was really satisfying jump charging. Not a lot of love given to the jump charging in Spyro Tasses. <laughs> Dodge the yellow. Yeah, it's so funny that uh that my real life girlfriend has like orange hair, <laughs> just like this. So we joke around. It's like she's, I literally uh, I literally am with the freaking fairy from Haunted Tower. <laughs> my real life girlfriend. That this is what happens when you play this much Spyro. You just naturally, yeah, it was meant to be. You just naturally gravitate towards all the redheads, I guess. <laughs> Interestingly, he was able to break that box without collecting any of the accidental gems. That probably was very specific movement to do. Probably, again, the similar thing as I was mentioning earlier on in the run where he probably hit the box from above rather than from the ground because you would accidentally collect a gem or two at least by grabbing them out of their spawn point, which probably wouldn't have been reds, I would guess. But maybe they would have been. I don't know. I wasn't paying that close of attention, to be honest. Hey, to be honest... There's going to be stuff that I miss in this. There's probably cool stuff that you saw in this task. At this point, if you've been watching the whole time, there's probably cool stuff that you're going to see or have seen that I miss entirely. So if there's anything cool that you're seeing, especially if you're watching on YouTube, let me know what did I miss in the comments down below. I know I missed a lot of really cool shit in the uh, silly tasks. So, you know, give me a little, uh, hook me up. Hook me up with the knowledge that I'm missing, you know? I know you guys are Spyro fans too. I know I like to act like I'm the... Uh, I'm the resident expert of this game or whatever. Oh, that, that was crazy. How did he not get eaten there? When those dogs see you, it's really hard to get out of their way. Like, even if you jump away like that. That was insane. Birthday, Tassio. Happy birthday, you pendy. Shout out to you pendy. Come on. What? Do you hear that noise? Hold on. Listen to this. Weird, right? You know what I think that is? I think that is the turtle noise, but it's pitched up. That There's examples of that happening in different parts of this game. Uh, another place where that happens... Uh, again, the sound is very buggy in this game, so there are examples of ways you can like get the wrong music in certain levels to cancel music by pausing and unpausing really quickly. Um, as well as getting um, incorrect sound effects. Shouts to anyone who knows Ski Bobo. Hey, who remembers the frogs in Dark Hollow on my heavy playthrough where the frogs were like, Ski, Ski, Ski Bobo. They were literally saying like a pitched down version of one of the dragon dialogues. But there is a place where you can actually um, intentionally make a pitch bend happen, which is going to be in Nasty's homeworld. Um, if you take a death in, um, in Nork Nexus, Nasty's homeworld, um, then when you, right when you spawn, mash the pause button. And then you'll hear the pause noise, the bling, whenever you pause. You'll hear it go like, bling, 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 every time you re-pause. It's a cool little, like, intentional way to make that pitch bend happen. 
such a cool proxy. And you know what the cool thing about that proxy we just saw is? Is that um, you can actually do that in real runs. And if no particular route, either through the main categories or Vortex, is particularly useful for that trick. But I have seen Lumi Laura. Shoutouts to Laura. I've seen her do it um, as as a backup in any percent when you, you know, maybe fall down there. And I've seen her get that. It's really cool. Really cool backup. Insane that he was able to jump off of what looked like nothing there. Really extending the ledge. That's sort of a, it's kind of like a little sort of a mechanic, I guess you could say in this game. Shout out to the, yep, yep. You know he had to hit a couple bonks on him. You know he had to shout out. Shout out to the little red spring chest. Okay, hey, where are the red spring chest fans at, man? Who would bonk their fucking head on a red spring chest three times like Toasted Cat? Are you a true fan like Toasted? This one's for you. And big thanks to everyone who watched um, the video I made about the red spring chest. I think that's uh, my m almost my most viewed video on this YouTube channel, at least as of right now. People love the red spring chest. Really cool little, I'm just gonna point this out real quick. He, notice how he jumped off of that little shelf right there. You can actually land there. If you miss, for example, if you're playing 120% and you miss like the first flame or you're on the wrong cycle with that guy, you can turn in and land there and recover. It's, I call it the Wally recovery. Honored IP Almer. <laughs> IP Almer. Arnold IP all on her. <laughs> That's basically what I'm doing. The Arnold the IP all nerd. Love this supercharge. So technically like impressive to like dodge the gems he doesn't want and to get the ones he does. Barely enough speed to make that jump. I would have never thought you could make that supercharge. At least the way he does it there. Beautiful turkey elevator that's called. That's an actual strat they do in vortex runs. Like with a controller, you know, like in real time. A cool jump charge around that guy. That is not easy. Oh, and then the f the only okay. Shout out to the only red f red fan chest. Everyone loves the red spring chest, but does who likes the red fan chest? Hey, you want to see? Who wants to see me make a video about the red fan chest? There's also only one purple fan chest in this game as well in loot. So that might be a, p a potential video idea for the future. I am going to be working on some. Uh, videos next week, so I might I might make the sequel to the Red Spring Chest video. There's only one of these in the entire game. The second blue gem? Oh, where was it? Was it right? I gotta see it. Was it right here? Where was it? I, got, I gotta see it. I, I, I'm not gonna just let it slide. Okay, it's that. that makes sense. That makes sense. So yeah, so the gems, the non-red, even though, okay, let's take a step back. This task is the red red gem only task, but you can really understand why he took the non-red gems that he did. I mean, this task really, like at the end of the day, it's it's for, it's to kind of showcase like cool movement and cool like collection and stuff. And the spirit of that, I think is totally understandable when you consider those blues. Beautiful jump there, by the way, it's hard to make that. The way we do getting on top of that um, little platform early is to uh, do a flop off of it. Another Wally strat, by the way. Okay, he's gonna turn around here. This is another Wally strat. Can you believe all the Wally strats? Wally literally years ago pioneered all of these crazy like recoveries or weird like exploratory strategies. So shout outs to Yes Wally One. Never forget. Very nice. And you might be thinking that last red didn't home in, but while this, while the second one was homing in there, he manually kind of jump charged into the last one. You'll see that again in 120% runs, whenever there's a line of gems at the end of the level like that, um, you'll manually jump charge into the last one or two of them in order to uh, you know not have to wait for sparks to and then have them fucking home in like that. No, yeah, anything that's a Wally strat. If I ever say Wally strat, like, and there's a lot of them in this game. Um, it's talking about yes, Wally one. Except when I go to Haunted Towers and we kiss the fairy that, that I was talking about earlier. Her name's Wally the fairy because she kisses you through the wall. You've heard of kiss me through the phone, well. Kiss me through the wall. 
So I guess there's two blues in this run so far. Let's see if we get any more. Affirmative Wallace Uno. Yeah, it's one of the most legendary, uh, I would say, glitch hunters, strat finders of this game. And runners in his own right. He definitely, I'm not sure if he still holds a world record in any um, miscellaneous category, but he was he was quite the miscellaneous category um, savant of this game. Pioneer. Really cool movement here. I love how quickly, he, I love that he's, um. He's like flaming them and then getting the um, the TN the TN teamwork off of it it's called. Not TN trick, but TN teamwork, which rolls off the tongue a little better. That's TN trick. TNT trick, whatever. Don't mix those up. Beautiful. I love it. I just love, again, like I was saying this when I watched the Silly Percent test, this is like that kind of optimal collection focused type run that I, for me as a 120%, you know, Chad, whatever, connoisseur, um, this is something just seeing gems collected optimally is just something that I, I just, it's just oddly satisfying for me, even though it's not as, I guess you'd say flashy of movement, it's not as much out of bounds and proxying and silliness. There's a, definitely a place for, I think, optimization of this type in Tassin. You know, it's just two different worlds, two different approaches to the game. And I think that's really cool. You could take the same game and approach it in, the, in different ways and still accomplish nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's got the 80. Yeah, Wally's still got the 80 Dragon World Record. So, yeah, don't sleep on Wally. Wally's a true, true Spyro gamer. He also had the Enter the Dragonfly uh, record for a long time. Probably other things. I think he, he still probably has the Zera Myths Awaken record. But I think that was on an old patch of, of it. Shouts to you if you know what Zera Myths Awaken is. Probably the best Spyro fan game out there. Look it up. Z-E-R-A Myths Awaken. If you want something fun to do with your evening. Green? Oh, he got a green? I gotta, I gotta see it. I gotta see it. I'm not letting it slide. I, I am going to observe every non-red collection. Yeah, that makes sense. I, it has to be justified. In my opinion, it's okay if you grab non-reds, but it has to be justified. And in that case, it was justified. I imagine that Toasted Cap probably tried to do that proxy um, without collecting the green, and it was probably like impossible. It, I feel like it, it's gotta be possible though, right? You should be able to hit that enemy from above and still make it in the corner in time. I don't know. I won't question it. Insane movement, by the way. Dude, I need to watch that one more time as well. I'm sorry to keep knocking him back. Yeah, totally, you can see he tried. No, but look at this. The sharp, the, the turn, oh my God. The turn it into the wall in order to bring it down enough for him to jump off of the fucking shelf again. Similarly to what I do in my Twilight route, but a lot more complicated. Really cool wall going there. That was a satisfying level. I, I, I'm gonna say that was my favorite level so far. I like that Twilight. That was very nice. Yeah, that wall glide is fucked up. I don't doubt that for a second. Because I know Vortex Runners have probably tried to do that. Before there was the strat where you supercharge on top of the roof and then, and then you know, proxy or glide over. I'm sure there was like Vortex Runners trying to do that glide basically. You're in awe with this whole run. Hey, if you're in awe with this whole run, I want to say thanks for enjoying some beautiful, optimal Spyro gameplay with me. This has been a... Oh my God, out the air! That's dangerous, by the way, because if you do that, there's ways you can activate a glitch in this game. One of very few glitches in this game called Tiny Key. And hitting that thief in a weird way like that it can trigger Tiny Key. I've seen it happen uh, from people on the Spyro Discord. Really cool that he was able to do that and not get fucking tiny key. What's up, Laura? You missed the tap? Yeah, you missed it. I'm not even re reacting to you. By the way, quick shout out to Laura in my chat. Laura also did a reaction to this task. She's currently a, she's current. You guys know fucking Laura. I don't have to give her an introduction. 
that beautiful push right there. Always give a shout out to the push. So make sure you check out her channel or wherever the fuck she posts that. I know she's like uh, making a U new, new YouTube channel soon. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Uh, yeah, rest in peace, the old Lumi Laura. And look at that, the frame perfect exit. That is insane for a couple reasons. First of all, that's a one, one out of 30 like uh, fucking frames. One, one frame every 30 seconds, you fuck a frame perfect. And then he did that, and what that does actually is it, it actually dupes the dragon out here. So if you don't collect this dragon and then pause exit, collect him, and then go back in and do the same thing, it'll keep spawning that dragon indefinitely. Or something like that. It's either you collect the dragon first. Yeah, no, you don't collect the dragon. I think that's what it is. You don't collect the dragon. You go into nasty and then it sp spawns the other one on top. And then you can keep doing that indefinitely. I think that's what it is. And so that's how you can collect infinite dragons and spirals by doing that frame perfect pause level exit when you hit nasty Nork. It's a really neat dragon dupe. Unfortunately, it's not fast. You know, it obviously takes a minute to run through the level every time to, to dupe another dragon. But I did do that in my um, in my GDQ uh, glitch showcase where I skipped Nestor. That is the reason why Nestorless uh, playthroughs are possible, which it's still not a category on the miscellaneous leaderboards. Uh, Spyro mods, where are you at? I have the Nestorless world record. I don't just have any percent 120. I got Nestorless too. But guys, if you enjoyed this uh, amazing task, I think that's the end of it, right? If you enjoyed this task, thank you for hanging out. I quite enjoyed it myself. You see a RuneScape video happening there. Um, let's listen to that Sony intro one more time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah, thanks for watching everybody. Um, if you like uh, reactions to tasks like this, I'll definitely do more in the future. If you haven't seen the silly percent reaction where I break down and kind of talk about all the strats he does in there, it's even crazier movement than what you saw in this run. Um, and just more focused on just bouncing around and doing everything. But in e either way, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching the YouTube as always. And um, I love you guys. Keep on spiraling and I will catch you guys in the next one. Chuggers in the chat.